Fancyness is podcast episode number 1,131. Wow. I feel, yeah, I feel like we have a good one planned for you. <laughs> Connected Women of Influence is paving the way for women to build a strong professional community that fosters growth, support, and collaboration. The organization believes by converging together, women can help support one another professionally, leading to better advocacy on behalf of each other. And I have the founder, the driving influence behind <laughs> Connected Women of Influence, Michelle Burquist, on the show. Michelle, welcome to Critical Mass Radio Woo! Show. Thank you, Rick. Thank you, thank you. So before we talk about that and Sue Talks, yes. let's talk about you. Okay. Oh, wow. Let's just stop the presses on right. that, shall we? Yeah. Talk about me. What right. do you want to know about well, me? Uh, <laughs> tell us a little bit about your path or what you're doing today. Like, help yeah. set the context Cliff for Cliff Notes my... version. Let's do that. Now, I'm, I'm originally, as a commercial banker, was my corporate background. So I... Lent money, said no a lot to small businesses, um, okay. went through five mergers, but I have been an entrepreneur since the early 90s in that other recession. Only certain ones of us know that other recession. And, you know, to me, it's like the entrepreneurial bug is bit. So I had a corporate gift business for nine years, built it, sold it, started this incredible association at the worst year ever in starting a business, which was 2000. 2008. Oh, baby. Yep. We're, start, we're celebrating our 10-year anniversary right now. And what a ride. That's right. all I got to say. So what made you focus in this area, the Connected Women of Influence? What what was it back 10 years ago? That yeah. You know, I, I remember. It's like, you know, I wrote a book in 2008, which was another interesting thing. I was traveling the country, you know, speaking at women's groups and chambers and associations. And what drove me crazy was that I was craving just this conversation and interaction with other women leaders who were – you know, not to network. I mean, networking is such an overused word, but craving conversation with other women to say, you know, how do you do that? How could we learn from each other? It's like just not to sit there at a keynote and eat a rubber chicken and hear the latest keynote tell you the five things you already knew, but rich conversations with other women and how they advance and lead. And to me, I looked, there wasn't that. And a couple of colleagues of mine said, well, Michelle, what are you going to do about that? Right. I was like, wow, gauntlet. I have to, eh. I've been challenged. <laughs> so there were four of us that actually formed Connected Women of Influence back in July in 2008. Okay. And what service area were you it where did you set your first group up? Yeah, so um, I'm based in San Diego. So that was our that was our okay. hub. That was our headquarters. We had 17 charter members at the University of San Diego serving lunch, drinking champagne, and saying, with a leap of faith, here were these 17 women that say, if you say so, Michelle, we're going to be a part of this. And, okay. and that's when we started. And okay. since then, we've grown to Orange County, and we just launched Los Angeles in January. So we're going national, baby. All right. Well, <laughs> let's, let's talk about that. Um, so what is the uniqueness about the Connected Women of Influence? You know, for us, you know, we never, I guess I don't ever want to say it's like what we're, what we, who we don't offer as a, as a potential member to CWI. But what we said was we wanted to take a clear lane that we were looking for women who lead in some capacity in business. So okay. ours are women who lead people <clears throat> or they lead projects or teams or a company. And if you meet that criteria, you know, including men, believe it or not. So we're not only women oh, okay. only. We, we mm -hmm. love to engage men. You know, we love to support men as well. We had our first ever award for a man who supports women's advancement this year at our award show. But anyway, women who can be members are, are leaders in what they do, and they want to, you know, be committed to advancing, support other women, and help the next one in line is what we really look for for members. So, Michelle Burquist, you're talking about having this real conversation. Yeah. Not a networking event. Correct. And I think networking for service, I think that's important to be out, Absolutely. get your brand, meet be visible. people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, you of gotta course. Do, you got to do that. Of course. Um, but that's not where you go to solve problems or get connected. Exactly. And I think what we found is there's a blend. You know, what I find with women, women want to converse. You know, they want to share information with each other. A, a key phrase we like to say is that we share, we don't tell. Right. We're not about coaching. You know, we're not about, you know, speakers who tell you the five things that, you know, you, all, you, you know or should know. We're just about those conversations that say, here's who I am. Let me get to know you. And what can we do to support one another professionally? So that's the key piece. How does that happen? 
Like, well, take me inside yeah, the room. Yeah, you know, a couple of things. I mean, we definitely do events. We have tons of events. We're not at a lack of events. But over the years, our members are craving maybe more inner circle type conversation. So we have any sort of meetings or events, both using online and, you know, mm-hmm. actually in person, face to face, as a way to be able to bring our mother- members together with a topic. Um, we don't have a speaker. What we do is we have a topic of conversation and let women dish at tables about their opinions opinion on the matter and trust me they will tell you what they think um, you know then as you kind of grow an organization you know I find that women even want more of those kind of small group conversations where they're more confidential more like I, I, I guess I don't use the word mastermind but they are a safe place where women can kind of share some of the issues or challenges or things that are impeding them from getting to whatever level they want to the next tier of leading people teams or projects and then at the same time you know you got to throw in an awards event at some point because you got to recognize these women yeah it's been good i'm I'm working to get them like the business journal but we get about 300 400 attendees and we have 12 different very specific topics and then our lovely event that we came up with about two and a half years ago um that's that's our sue talks and those are very special and we're going to talk about that in a minute but not just quite yet so the how long have you been doing the awards we started those in 2015. Okay. And how did you decide that was the right thing to do? Well, you know, I, I personally wanted to do an awards program that recognized women in business and industry and make it, you know, about achievement and about, you know, nominations by others, right? Not so much self-nominations, even though we do accept those. But, you know, being recognized as a woman by somebody else, whether it's a woman or a colleague or someone in your organization, right. is special. And so for us, I wanted to do it. But 2008 was there. Then 2000. 2009, nobody was spending money on fluff, so it was just never the right time. Okay. And then all of a sudden, we said, you know, we've got about 300 members. Let's let's try this puppy. And after San Diego came Orange County, and we're hoping for LA in the next year and a half. Do you look at the Inland Empire? Is that a that's that's 2019? Oh, okay, Absolutely. so you have a growth strategy. Here. Absolutely. And then, then we're going to take the nation. World domination, dude. Okay. World world domination. Right. Let's let's uh, start with California. <laughs> It's a good place to be. Right. It's a good place so to be. So we're going to take our first and only stop here on Critical Mass Radio Show and Podcast with Michelle Berquist. When we come back, you mentioned the topic, and I'd like to learn more about Sue Talks. Two little words, yes. We can do that? Yes, I would right. love that. Don't you, you go anywhere, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Michelle and I will be back after this word from me. Podcast. I am your host, Richard Franzi. All of our shows can be heard anytime on iHeartRadio, iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker.com. Hundreds of former guests, websites, <laughs> who CEOs have appeared on our program. You know, since we started this thing in 2009, our show has reached hundreds of thousands of listeners through our live stream on octalkradio.net, our podcast, and our other platforms like YouTube with the video that we're streaming right now. Simply type Critical Mass Radio Show into your favorite podcasting platform, and you'll start receiving, like magic, our weekly shows with great guests like Michelle Berquist, who's not only the founder of Connected Women of Influence, but also <laughs> involved with Sue Talks successful unstoppable empowering women talks that inspire change wow yeah right? drop the mic That's hey, serious. Baby. yeah this is all like, you that's how it works. so oh no not all me what takes, is it? it takes a village okay i have four partners to sue talks okay yeah so what is it well you know we again we do a lot of events and you know as you kind of hit the year after year you got to keep keep things fresh so we were ideating with a group of us and saying let's try something different we need a different type of event what can we do besides what we're doing and you know one of our co-founders my partner Deanna Potter um, we were on the phone and she said you know let's let's do our own version of talks and I was like oh oh I mean you know you think about it you noodle it then you talk about it then you obsess about it and you know a year and a half later we did our first two talks at the intro of our women lead conference down in Carlsbad and we had 75 people eight presenters and it was one of those magical nights that you go we've got something really special here and we've grown since then we do a Sioux talk in a metropolitan area once a year so that's it six presenters on stage it used to be all women this year we had our first man sue talk presenter and he was a retired admiral from the navy so it was pretty special right um and at the, and we look for women who are maybe not necessarily professional speakers we want a real blend of women in different professions and different roles and doing different things but what definitely are they, what are they talking about always about advancing in business so some of our t- themes have been it's my um it's it's my decision other ones have been in my 
opinion. Um, I think so you set a show theme. We do. And then people come in with a content. Correct. And our talks are only 12 minutes, okay, so we keep them ask. really tight. There is no PowerPoint. There's no props. There's none of that. It's you and a sign on a stage with passion, purpose, and storytelling to give us your opinion. Uh -huh. And they're all on YouTube, by the way. I was but just you read yeah, my line. Yeah, they're so, online, of course. Uh-huh. And, and so, do you have some of these planned at any time in the future? We do, as a matter of fact. So, okay. we are launching Los Angeles in September, on the 20th of September. Where? We're in L.A. Uh, Culver City. Okay. So, we will be there. We just have put our, you know, announcement out with our six presenters. So, they are ready to roll. And you would think I would know what the answer is. I believe the theme this for this one is, it's my decision. So, we have some pretty exciting Sue Talk presenters that are going through the whole coaching and, you know, learning their, you know, how to give a Sue Talk. It's a little different than giving a normal presentation right. we want women to be passionate and bold and brief um, and put it in the eye perspective we want to hear your story what do you think what do you want to rant about in a great way uh -huh. but all about what business and industry okay do you have any plan for Orange County um, Orange County is December 6 this will be our third year in Orange County okay. so we've been in Orange County um, and it's it's like I said, it's been well received. Women want to be able to give sure. their opinions on stage. Women love to give their opinions. And at the same time, we have a whole process so that we make sure that, you know, the women that are standing on stage are giving us a little sense of who they are and what they're all about. So you authentic. Know, authentic is a big one. And at the same time, we need to make sure that the attendees have something they can walk away with. And right. the whole goal is to inspire some sort of change, mindset, behavior, you know, maybe like help the next one in line or help the next generation, something like that where it inspires change is our goal. So you've been doing this for 10 years. I'm tired. I'm so tired. Oh, no, you don't seem tired <laughs> at all. Uh, what has changed? You know, the fear factor, let's put this, you know, when you start a group, people have an impression of who you are and what you do, right? I think what's changed over the years is we, what we started when we started CWI is not what we are now. I mean, when we started, we thought, let's put a group of women together, have these fabulous conversations. Then it was like, well, you know, we really need to be more purposeful. It's like, what do we really stand for? Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you know this book. Um, in 2014, we were kind of losing our mojo a little bit. You know, we were trying to figure how can we stay relevant? You know, we're not a networking group. And I had a colleague of mine who sent me secretly the book Start With Why. It totally changed my mindset. Really? Oh my, it was so powerful. Wow. I read the book. I was like, this is crazy. This is amazing. And we started with our why. What is our why, right? And all we want to do is be resources and be advocates on behalf of each other. And if we converge together and we have those conversations, it's a pretty powerful thing to move the momentum forward for women. And mm -hmm. at the same time, not be a group that bashes men there are groups like that you know there are there are and oh, i hate them rats. and then there's women's groups that do other things but i think for us we wanted to not only engage men but uh -huh. we also wanted to make it that look it's like we all have bumps we all have issues we all have things going on but you know together we're better and with one person's support of another one it, it literally can change change the world that's our goal and world domination as well okay so my why is to have a lasting positive impact on the lives <gasps> of my clients so you know what? i went through that book and found it to be very wasn't it right and, a, and our wise we need more women leaders that's it i okay. mean really we want to see more women lead the way that's it whether wow. it's business whether it's behavior whether it's like themselves it's like it doesn't have to be about managing right. you know a corner office and you know fortune 500 firm so how has the influx of millennials into the workforce impacted your organization this one's a huge one i mean and i will say just kind of very authentically one of my you know what keeps you up at night kind of thing is that i'm you know i'm seasoned so i have been around the block for a few years in business and one of the things you learn when you're you know in business is you get to know other people and build relationships hence network build relationships right i think the new generation here of millennials, it's like my fear factor is that these millennials are not as much joiners as my generation really? or the Gen Xers or even the Gen Y. And so that's what we're finding is how to be relevant for millennial women because our members, I call us lovingly the 80s ladies because we have 40s, 50s, and 60-somethings very seasoned in what they do. Right. But our membership is also looking for ways to give back now to young girls and helping that next generation in a different way. Way. But millennials are de definitely something that keep me up at night 
how can we be relevant for them? Because we have a lot of expertise, a lot of um, longevity of women who have been there and done that and want to give back. And so we're looking for different ways to be able to do that. We've landed on a couple, but, you know, attracting the millennial women is something that's very much a goal of ours. All right. Well, put that out there. <laughs> Thank you. It's out there. It's out there in the universe. Find now. the 20-somethings. We need them. Right. Well, and, th- and 30-somethings, right? Early 30-somethings. Absolutely. So. We're getting more on those because I think they realize now in their careers that right. relationships really do matter. So right. a little different perspective. S- sometimes there's no substitute for a safe place to air your thoughts and get insight and advice. Yeah, you know, and I have to say what I love, the compliment I love the most is when somebody comes to one of our meetings and they go, I had no idea that women could wow. be so nice. I was like... Where have you been? I mean, it's just a shock well, but to isn't me. There a Women sense. can be petty. Yeah, oh, isn't, my gosh. Isn't there a sense that and there's a term for it. Can, yeah. Yeah. But, there, I mean, there, there's a sense sometimes that women are harder on women than men are on women. That's a in the, whole in the other workplace. subject. In the workplace. I, absolutely. That's a radio show itself. Okay. Why don't more women support other women? Right. You know, we see it in corporate America. You know, why is it that women still don't do that? That is right. one of the number one things but y- you that women have, don't do. You have, But you have a positive uh, socioeconomic trend going on right now, which is the awakening to mm-hmm. the fact that women are not equal partners in a lot of work environments and have had some pretty nasty environments to have to work in. So, yep. I mean, there is this consciousness now that women need to find their voice. Yeah, and maybe I'm one of the very few here that will say this, but I think it's it's good and, and maybe a little scary. because No, you can't say that. I can say that. I'm right. a woman. I can say this. Okay, you're But allowed, I think yeah. it there is a lot of bashing going on. And to me, women can do a lot of things on our own, right, to move the needle forward for our own success. And I totally get it that, you know, the media and the things that are out there about what's happening in women in business and their careers – Yet, among our conversations with our members, it's always, what can we do on self-leadership, sure. actions, and behaviors? That can, do a, that can do a lot of good as well. Right. And you can get a lot of great ideas from people who have the experience of walk that path either before exactly. you or even beside you, but in a little different mm-hmm. way, right? So oh. you're, you're Connected Women of Influence. How would you come up with the name? You know, um, it, you know, I think we idea. I probably had eight pages of uh, okay. business names. That's yeah. how you start, right? right? You're like, just put them all down. Right. And then it, that was in the time where you go online and you look them up to see if the URL is available, right? Yes. But I think, you know, for us and even our logo means something. It's like, you know, because if we connect together, right, as women, being supportive of one another, being advocates, then that drives influence and impact. Mm. And so connected women of influence right. makes a lot of sense. But yeah. it's we do. a circular kind of a thing, isn't it, then? Yeah. Right. Links. Think right. we're linked together yes. is the goal. Yes. Yeah. And so, we're all different and unique in different oh, ways. Like snowflakes. <laughs> Did I interrupt you? You were on a roll. I don't know. No, this is a radio show. I, I don't mean Let me interrupt you. Did I interrupt you? Uh, yes. So, uh, <laughs> final question. Well, next to last final question. Okay. What's your guiding principle? What's your philosophy for how you're building this organization? Every day in every way, I always say it's like we're never perfect and we're never done. And based on that, we're always looking to change things up right? We know we can't do everything perfectly. It never happens. At the same time, you know, listen. But I think the idea that even when you've created success with one thing, I'm always looking around the corner to go, what's, what's next? How can we differentiate ourselves? How can we continue to still be relevant? And a lot of that is knowing that it's a little different business model because we're an association. So our members have a real um, valuable input into what we do and how we move forward. But to me, if you don't listen to the people that believe in you and took a leap of faith with you, what are we doing? <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. Listen to your clients. Uh, They'll lead isn't you. Isn't that like basic 101? Sometimes, yeah. And sometimes you know, we don't. Not every entrepreneur believes that. So if someone would like Shocking. to either right, find out more about Connected Women of Influence or Sue Talks, mm-hmm. where should they go? Um, to your, you know, your else, SueTalks.com is a great place to start. And for Connected Women of Influence, it's Connected women of influence.com so it's plural it is all right and you own that we do own that got a wonderful we website got a trademark on that yeah baby with yeah. a lot of valuable resources on the site you know we have yeah absolutely we have webinars we have videos it's like our women lead tv series is really kind of kicking up because everything's about video now right we have a very active blog and an event calendar and we have a new website in development for our 10-year kind of anniversary it never ends never see we're never done You're that's never what done. i said You're bam right. Right. you got to keep improving your service offering to stay relevant. Exactly. Well, thank you for being a friend of the program and here a guest on Critical Mass Radio Show and Podcast.
And I'd like to thank our engineer, Paul Roberts, for out him. He always engineers a great show. And our producers, without whom I couldn't do this show, Joan Park, Crystal Nunley, and Haley Stern. If you'd like to connect with me on LinkedIn, I'm Richard Franzi, F-R-A-N-Z-I. And until our next show, I hope all of your business decisions will move your company in a positive direction.